My goodness we're back with big questions and today this is actually week two yeah. and today we're talking about what we are talking about mental health Ooh, we're talking about suicide and we're trying to answer the question is faith enough when it comes to overcoming mental health wow those are good questions and we brought in our very good friends from life point church hayden and his wife shannon who lead the youth ministry and shannon's actually mm -hmm. a professional counselor so i think today's conversation is going to be amazing it's going to be awesome we're so excited to hear what these two have to say so without further ado here's some answers to today's big, big question, question. Hi, welcome to Big Questions. I'm Hayden with Tucker and the whole Scotts Hill team. We're just so happy that you're here today. Yeah. Uh, welcome to our YouTube channel. Yeah. So guys, um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's it. That's all we have. Hey, Scotts Hill students and LifePoint students, hey. right? What's going yes. on? We've got Hayden here. So excited. Um, we're talking about mental health, and I want to dive right into the conversation. Mm -hmm. But first off, thank you so much for being here yeah. and taking the time out of your day to just hang out with us yeah. and talk about mental health. Um, I know that we talked about in the beginning how Shannon was going to be here. What's up, man? Like, where's I know, Shannon? I felt so bad. I was driving over here and I was like, man, I probably should tell Tucker that I'm not bringing Shannon. Uh, we were dog sitting a dog. She had to stay home with the dogs. And yeah. Anyways. So That's cool, man. Here. Sorry That's... that y'all did a whole intro about her. She's not here. I'm not Shannon. I'm her husband. And she's way more qualified to talk about the conversation we're having today. But. Anyway, hey, so you're I'm, you're one man. You're yeah. married, and we've got a big couch for you. So if you ever want to lay down during <laughs> this time, um, and we'll still, Shannon's got like an excellent article yes. she wrote about mental health. So we'll link that. So yeah. she'll kind of be with us in spirit. Yeah, yeah. very good. So let's dive in. So yes. my first question is just anxiety, depression, mental health. What is it, and why does it exist? Yeah. So I think I mean I think we can all add to this conversation. Like I said, I'm I'm not a mental health professional. I'm not a professional counselor or anything. I'm just a pastor. So mm -hmm. I deal with people. I hand, I work with people, and so mental health. Every it's it's not like some are mentally healthy and some aren't. I think that the more the bigger question is, you know, what am I dealing with on the inside right now? The inside yeah. me, my thoughts, my feelings, my emotions. Are those out of sync? Um, is there something up? And I think that. Mental health, the biggest thing, I think, you know, there's a lot of different, it's a huge topic we were talking about. Like, you got anxiety, you got depression, you got um, all these different diagnoses um, and, and different things that clinical counselors, professional counselors that they work with clients on. Mm -hmm. um, but as pastors and leaders, I mean, I think we're working with people and students, you're watching this and you're, you know, you've probably thrown out words like, oh my gosh, I'm so depressed or, oh my, my anxiety's through the roof. And I think today, just some of the conversation we're going to have, it's going to help bring some clarity to yeah. that question. You know, what, what is depression? What is anxiety? And how do I take care of my mental health? Mm. You know, so yeah. I think, I think there's a lot to that, um, that I hope we talk through today, but I, I kind of wrote just when I was kind of writing some notes last night, talking through stuff, um, you know, whenever, whenever you're talking about anxiety, um, you're talking about a depression, which I think when we think mental health, we think of those two words mm -hmm. probably the most. Um, but those are, you know, diagnosed, hmm. um, you know, mental health issues. So like yeah. when you're dealing with depression, um, you know, that's something that a psychologist or a counselor has, a professional has diagnosed you with. It's usually maybe six months to a year yeah. of um, dealing with sadness or for example with anxiety it's an apprehensive expectation hmm. of a real or perceived fear so hmm. it's really like worry for the future that's not just temporary but it's a consistent consistent thing um but that doesn't mean that your worry isn't valid to talk about it doesn't mean yeah. that your sadness hmm. isn't worth you sharing or talking about it's good to know what the differences are i think the biggest thing today and uh, this is a long way to get here the biggest <laughs> thing i think that we need to really lean into the biggest thing is that we need to talk about this yeah like we don't need to hide it we don't need to leave our mental health in the dark we don't all of the inside thoughts that we're wondering why am i thinking that what is this bringing those things to light mm -hmm. with a safe group of people um is everything yep and uh and yeah i'm just really passionate about us talking about the things that we don't understand that are going on in our heads oh yeah um, because I know one thing, the God who created us, he understands them. It's not scaring him. So I think first and foremost, we need to talk to God, but we need to talk to e 
talk to each other. And yep. like today, what I hope, you know, we can have a conversation just a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think just to even the second part is like, why does this this mental health stuff exist? And, and just to the short answer is because of sin. Like yeah. in the beginning, uh, there was a fall and, and God didn't intend for us to go through these things. However, he can use these things to make us stronger. And I loved, I know I'm coming out of the gate right now, but in the article that Shannon wrote, she talked about how we should own our story Mm -hmm. and not let our story own us. And that just hit me so hard um, because I think oftentimes we allow our our story to own us and we we become trapped by it. But instead, we should be free. We're not Mm -hmm. held down by that sin and that bondage anymore. And so own that story and use it as a diving board for God's glory. Mm -hmm. So that was, yeah, that was fire, man. Well, I mean, I think, and Shannon was just making a really great point. There's some great books on that. Um, Through the Eyes of a Lion by Levi Lusco. He talks about your pain being a passport to get you places you never could get before. And I I, I think that when you're dealing with a mental health issue, illness, you have a pain that not everybody else has had. Um, there are a lot of people. That's another question I think that we were going to hit on. Are you mm-hmm. alone in this? And you're not at mm-hmm. all. But you have something that not everybody else has. And so your opportunity to minister to someone else who has that issue is so much greater now because you have that illness or that issue. Mm. And so, yeah, I mean, there, God can use so much purpose in that pain. Yeah. Um, but I think in order for us to even see that, like we have to, we have to talk about it. Like we have to bring it to light. And we have to be comfortable with it like this is what i'm going through this is what i'm dealing with um so hayden i love what you're kind of talking about you kind of hit on this idea that there's a difference between just anxiety and stress and there's a difference between depression and just being sad so do you want to like kind yeah, of lean I think, into that a little bit more well when you said that i mean i think that a lot of us can relate like students maybe you've done this i've done this before i do this still now and I have to catch myself. Uh, I say, oh my gosh, I'm so depressed right now. Yep. Or, oh my, I'm just, I have so much anxiety right now, which you, you do. And maybe you do have some like, you know, things that look like depression, yeah. but there is a difference between sadness Ooh, and depression. Um, There's a difference yeah. between worry and anxiety and even understanding like what is, what is, what is stress and what are all these things. And so last night I was talking to Shannon, who's not here, but I was talking to my wife. <laughs> she's, still great. Uh, she's still great. She's awesome. We love you, Shannon. Uh, I was talking to her, just kind of trying to get some clarity on like, what are, what, what, what makes depression, depression, mm-hmm. what makes sadness, sadness, what makes it having anxiety or worry different than being diagnosed with anxiety and it's it's really just that i mean it's that someone has essentially diagnosed you with that and so i wrote it this depression is a persistent feeling of sadness and hopelessness and a loss of interest in activities that once you enjoyed and so you've lost interest in something and it's persistent uh, your, your feeling of sadness and hopelessness, it's consistent. It continues to happen. It doesn't go away. Wow. And it's, it's not going away for maybe six months to a year, more times than not. And so sadness is more temporary, while depression is kind of something you're, you're living with. Mm-hmm. And that's a big difference. And so when you're going through depression, you're going through something that's, that's a, it's a consistent thing that's happening. Sadness is here today it maybe is gone tomorrow we all know yeah. our emotional roller coasters that we live on for some of us oh, yeah. and that that sadness is part of that that roller coaster you know mm-hmm. happiness is part of that roller coaster but depression is something that's a consistent thing that you have to you have to cope with um, anxiety is kind of the same way um, you might be worried in the moment mm-hmm. about something but a consistent worry over a six month to a year period of time that happening consistently about something in the future, this like apprehensive expectation for what's going to happen and just yeah. constantly thinking about that. When that's happening six months to a year, you have like a diagnosed anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you uh, are just feeling worried about something, that's it's pretty normal. Yeah. Um, I do want to point out, though, that if you have a depression or any mental illness and you've been diagnosed with that, you're not alone in yeah. that at all. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's maybe different than something that's more common, like sadness that we all go through. Depression is not something that everyone has, mm-hmm. but it is something that a lot of people are dealing with. And so I want those who are watching this to know you're not alone and this isn't something that you need to hide yeah. and, you know, and not talk about. This is something you need to bring 
yep. to light. Yeah, like there's millions. I mean, I was reading Shannon's article. Like there's millions of people in the U.S. alone that are yeah. dealing with these things. And so um, if you feel like you're alone, like literally there are millions of other people around you that are like, yeah, I get this. I know how this feels. Um, and so I think that is really important for our students to hear. Um, but I think it really tends to be like the guilt and the shame that kind of is surrounding uh, depression, anxiety, mental health that makes you feel like I am alone in this. Um, so would you have anything to kind of speak into that aspect of like, if I'm feeling this guilt and the shame, like how do I kind of push past that to try to figure out, do I have anxiety and depression? How do I deal with it? And I'm throwing that question no, on you. Yeah, right, no, right? I think, but, I think the <laughs> biggest thing, I think sometimes people feel uh, ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. um, when shame is usually associated with something you've done, mm -hmm. like, but you, you don't you don't do anything to get mental illnesses like you don't you yeah. didn't do anything to get yourself to, like this good. is something you you have uh, you know like we we are we're born into an imperfect world yeah. that's just the reality of our situation none of us are perfect and the world we live in is definitely far from perfect mm -hmm. there's disease there's famine there's poverty there's sickness there's all of these terrible things happening in the world right now and part of that is mental is, is mental mental illnesses yeah. and mental health not being up to par with perfection mm -hmm. and so you're not perfect newsflash so don't be scared you know to talk about yeah don't be scared to, not, to talk about your imperfections right yeah. so like yeah. you know yeah. to bring those to light is not going to shock anyone it's actually probably going to attract more people to you mm -hmm. um, and you sharing yes. those things and being honest about those things because i think at the end of the day to our core most of humanity appreciates authenticity yep. yeah. and and that's something that all of us are like man that person is 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 being open with me yep. they're being mm -hmm. transparent with me they're being honest with me but yeah i mean it's definitely not something to be scared to talk about because most people a lot of people are dealing with it mm -hmm. uh, i you did, just got to get past that hump though oh, like yeah. that, that yeah. like that moment of saying it yeah. um that moment of saying i have this issue yeah. and telling somebody yeah. and so like getting to that point it's up to you and you got to be strong mm -hmm. and it's hard to be strong when you feel weak, oh, yeah. Yeah. it Absolutely. really is. And I want to just like be there for those people who mm -hmm. are like, I'm too weak to say something. Yeah. And so I think it's important if you see a friend that is like downcast or a friend that just seems, you know, like they're going through it, like just ask them. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, I would say be honest. Like, mm -hmm. So. And I think a big call to us that are the ones that are the are the ones that our friends are coming to. Yeah. So you know, a big call to me, like I'm not struggling with depression. But if someone were to come to me and say, hey, I'm, I'm dealing with this, mm -hmm. um, it's not my job to fix them. Nope. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, good, that's a big thing in the church right now is like we think, okay, what do I got to do to make you better? Mm. You know, what do I got to do? And so a, a lot of the default for a lot of people is just to say, hey, Jesus can heal you right now. Let, let's pray. And if he's not healing you and you just keep bringing this up, I don't know what to do for you. So just stop talking to me about it. Yeah. Like. And it causes people to put it back in the dark because it's like, oh, mm -hmm. man, you prayed for Jesus to heal me and I'm still dealing with this issue. Mm -hmm. I don't want to bring it up because then it makes what your prayer not seem important. It makes it, it seems like I'm nagging you about this. And it, it, you need to your job is to listen and mm -hmm. to continuously wow. listen and bear the pain and carry the burden as scripture yeah. tells us to do over and over again. Like so if someone comes into me and talks to my students, if you come to me and talk about this and you're still dealing with it months and months later, I'm going to still listen because Jesus is still listening to you when mm. you are praying about these things. Yep. My job is to continue to listen to you, yeah. even if it's still going on and it hasn't gone away. Again, depression is something you live with. Yep. So it's not a surprise if this is something you learn to cope with in a better way, but if mm -hmm. it's still with you years from now, uh, you know, I should still be with you years from now. So there's this thing that a lot of times people with mental health issues they go to somebody and someone would say like hey just have have faith and it'll be fine but at what point is there enough faith to get over you know this mental illness issue that that people have how do we how do we overcome that is there a certain amount of faith that we have to have or is there a certain place in in our spirituality that we need to meet at a certain sanctification point like how do we deal with that well, I, the the cool the cool thing about sanctification is it ends in eternity. Like yep. at that point, we reach perfection with Jesus. Um, so good. But the reality is, right now, where we're all at on this planet, it's not perfect. And mm. so, yeah, no. You're, so, bottom line, no, you can't have enough faith to to get this thing to go away. I mean, Jesus can heal you, yes, but it's not like Jesus is waiting for you to do something or to to execute some. Um, you know, spiritual discipline or something to him to be like, okay, now I'm going to get rid of this from you. 
Um, Jesus can heal you, yes, but this is not your fault. This isn't something that you got yourself into, so it's not really necessarily something you can get yourself out of. It's something that you can cope with. And yeah. I think when you hear that, you're like, oh, so I'm going to have this for the rest of my life. Well, no, not necessarily, <laughs> not at the same level, but it is something yeah. that, you know, we're going to have to bring to light. We're going to have to talk about, we're going to have to work out and we're going to have to put in some coping skills and some things to, to deal with it, whatever it is. We're talking about a broad topic of yeah, we are. depression, anxiety. Uh, you're talking about OCD. You're talking about uh, trauma. You're talking about all these different things that yeah. have happened in, in, in your life and they're causing mental health issues for you and so the bottom line is this isn't something that you got yourself into so it's not really something you can get yourself out of but it is something that you can seek counsel from mm -hmm. and make a lot better when you bring it yeah. to light yeah, so yeah good. what about the people who are like in specifically in the church which this saddens me yeah. to hear this but like there's no such thing as mental illness if you have jesus like if you're, you 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 don't actually have faith if if you deal with mental issues like what do you say to those people yeah i think that <laughs> what do you what do you say to yeah, those I, people? I, I know what, what i you, say what do you be, say yeah. Yeah. yeah because i know yeah. what i say i'm i'm that angers me yeah that well, angers it makes me. yeah it makes me frustrated and i think a lot of times um and this even speaks to some of the climate we're in right now with a lot of racial tension but we, yep. we take our experience and we project it onto others wow. and so we're saying okay this is what I'm going through. So this must be what you're going through. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people that say that this isn't a big deal, it isn't a big deal for them mm. because they're not maybe dealing with anything, you know, any sort of depth of emotion or any sort of issues happening. But guys, if, if you are just assuming that everyone is going through your world, that is just not the reality. Mm -hmm. uh, That's prideful, yeah, in my opinion. It's yeah. very selfish. Right. It's very prideful. Yeah. And it's just, it's just a narrow view of the world that you're in. Yeah, um, and so, yeah, I think that a lot of times um, I would just say to, to those people, to answer your question, to answer that question, yeah. to those people, I would just say, you know, open up your mind a little bit, mm -hmm. broaden your view, um, and start to see things from other people's shoes. All right, so next question, a little bit more heavy, but I think we'd be remiss to not talk about um, this conversation about suicide how that plays into mental health. And I think there's kind of this narrative that's within the church. People don't really like to talk about it, but like, if you commit suicide, where are you going? Like, is that like an unforgivable sin? Are you going to heaven after that? What does that look like? Yeah, so I, um, just to answer this question, I think it's the best, the best thing I can think of as a story of whenever, so when I first started in ministry, I would get asked um, to go speak at different FCAs and different, and some of y'all are involved in FCA at school. And yeah. um, I'd go and speak at school. And I remember this one middle school I went to speak at, I was um, booked to speak on a Friday morning and I was on my way there and I had found out the night before that one of the girls from the school had actually committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And so when I got there, I was not planning on talking about suicide or mental health or depression. I was simply giving a gospel presentation, like a presentation of who Jesus is and the good news that is found in a relationship with him. So I got there, I did that. We actually saw a lot of students begin a relationship with God wow, that morning. God. I came into the chorus that we did in this chorus room. I came in and we, we, there was usually like that gathering, like 15 people, but because of the tragedy that happened the night before, I mean, the whole room was packed. I think we had over a hundred kids like, sh like jammed into this wow. thing. And so uh, at the very end of the message, one of the kids raised his hand and I knew this question was going to come, which is the one that you just asked. Mm -hmm. um, if you commit suicide, do you go to heaven or do you go to hell? And in that moment, I, I really was worried about it because I still didn't have an answer for them. But I remember the, the, the words that came out of my mouth were, don't confuse the job description. Mm. And I, I just kind of built off that to the student of saying, hey, guess what? You were never given the task of choosing who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. Wow. That's not your responsibility. Mm. All we know for sure is that those who have a relationship with Jesus will yep. spend eternity with him. Yeah. And so you can have a relationship with him right now and guarantee that because of that relationship, you're going to heaven. Mm -hmm. And that's where we put our confidence and let mm -hmm. God take care of the rest. That's in his job description. Yeah. And so all we can worry about is, does that person know Jesus? But I was talking to Tucker about this same question right before we started filming. Like yep. darkness comes and goes for everyone, Christian yep. or not. Yep. And so you can be a Christian and have depression. You can be a Christian and have thoughts of suicide and you need to talk about those. Yep. But you can still be a Christian mm -hmm. and commit suicide, and I believe spend eternity with him. Because one moment 
can't take your salvation away. Mm -hmm. So why should one moment that takes your life away take away your eternity? Yeah. And that's just that's just not, it doesn't make sense. So in my opinion, yeah, I mean, I, I believe that you can be a Christian, you can go to heaven and you can have fallen in that moment and taken your life. But I, I do believe y you're here for a reason and yeah. that isn't something that you should jump into at all. But I, I believe that, that God is bigger than that one moment, mm. so. That's really good. Don't mess up the job description. I love that. I'm yeah. going to steal that, snag that Take for it. another time. Take but, it, yeah. Um, I love something that, you know, Tucker and I were talking about um, on this subject as well is that, yeah, I mean, if you have a relationship with Jesus and you commit suicide, like, you are going to spend an eternity with, like, you are. Um, but it's unfortunate to have to get to that place where you're taking your own life because what you're robbing yourself of is opportunities to glorify God in this life. Um, so I don't know, Tucker, if you want to expand. I'm just, I'm, I'm actually, I just, it, it, something's just hit me, and I just got really emotional all of a sudden, and I'm kind of started crying a little bit because I'm just thinking about the students who, I'm about to break down, but the students who have, that I've counseled and I've talked with and I've created a relationship with who have taken their life. Mm -hmm. And it's so sad because, like the potential that they had and they didn't see it because people didn't say enough to them or like, and, and I don't want you to feel like sorry or guilty and I don't, I'm not feeling guilty, but it just, it just breaks my heart to know that people don't think they're good enough, that mm -hmm. they don't matter. Yeah. And, and, and if you're watching this and you feel like you don't matter, I, I just, I just want to give you a hug. Mm -hmm. COVID-19 or not, like, yeah. I care about you. Yeah. I want to get to know you, even if we've never met before. Like, I, you matter to me, even if we don't know each other. Yeah. And, and like, it just, it just really it sat in my heart to know that there's so many teenagers right now, and that's a better option than life right now. Mm -hmm. But it's not, because God is your sustainer. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those things will be a diving board. Like he's talked about earlier, how, like, like those those scenarios and those issues are a passport to other great things and yeah. conversations with other people. And so like if you're thinking about it, if you're writing things down, bring that to the light. Talk to somebody. Get help. Don't be in this alone. Please yeah. don't be in this alone. I don't know who said it, um, but I repeat it all the time. Yeah. Uh, if you have a pulse, you have a purpose. Gosh, that's good. And I, and I think that so many students that are watching this tonight, like, whenever you're watching this you need to you need to know that like you mm. have a pulse you have a purpose there's a reason that you have breath in your lungs that the creator of the universe he made you saturn's in the sky but he calls you your his greatest wow. possession his greatest creation mm. so he he wants you here yeah. and and you know i i'm excited to see what the reason is right and like, mm. i'm sure you're excited to know what's the reason for my tomorrow and yeah. what does god have in store for me and he does have amazing amazing things in store for you i believe it yeah. Yeah. even if we i mean even if we don't know what our actual purpose is we can know for the christian that like we do have purpose because jesus was willing to die mm. for yeah. us and for our life and for our purpose <sighs> yeah. mm -hmm. and like i mean if that's not enough to say like okay i'm dealing with mental health issues and i'm having these suicidal thoughts but man jesus still died for me so there must yeah. be something yeah, more. That's there must good. be something more I'm living for if we can hold on to that. Um, wow. It won't take away the pain, the depression, the anxiety, the anything, but it will help us, mm -hmm. you know, uh -huh. move forward. Yeah, honor honor Jesus' death by living your best life. Yeah. Gosh. And yeah, you know, and, and continuing to live mm -hmm. and continuing to walk because he did the the dying for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um there's no reason to end it now. You know, let's keep this life going. Um and yeah, I, I, I feel the same way, you know, that you're saying like the amount of people I've talked to and I've had conversations with where it's just like, what, you know, why, why did you, why did this happen? Or why are you dealing with this? And I, I think the biggest thing um, that I have to remember as a pastor, and I hope that you guys remember as friends and as leaders and whoever's watching this, um, to continue talking with the person struggling, to let them know that they can continue to come to you with the problems, continue to come to you with the worry and the hurt and the pain and the depression. Um, because I think they wanna end it and you maybe are thinking about ending it because you feel like everyone wants to end the conversation with you, that they, yeah. no one wants to hear it anymore, no one wants to deal with it with you or carry it with you. I want you to know we want to and we want to continue to carry it with you. Yeah. Um, don't let that be an option. <laughs> So it's so important when we're asking all of these questions to filter everything through the Word of God. Yeah. It's so amazing. Like We're so blessed to have the Word of God. Mm -hmm. We're so blessed to see this love story played all the way out through where, where there was sin and then there was a need for a Savior and a Savior comes and He dies for us. Um, but there's, there's, there, there's signs of mental health 
um, and mental illness all throughout the pages of scripture. Yeah. And I think we need, we definitely need to talk about it because yeah. that's how we overcome. We look mm-hmm. to the word, we go to God, we worship. Yeah. And so like, what have you seen in God's word that's just helped you or helped you counsel through yeah. um, these things? Yeah, I think like we have to know too, these issues that we're dealing with have been, they're not new problems, they're not new issues. Like they're issues yep. that have existed for generations and generations and generations. And someone has dealt with the pain you're dealing with, mm-hmm. you know? And um, I, th- I think in scripture, when I read the Bible, I see David, he struggled with depression. You see in Psalm 38, four, mm-hmm. and then in Psalm 42, 11, um, you see just some of his cries out to God yeah. and you see what he's going through. And he, he definitely struggled with, the, you know, with that. You see, um, Elijah was clearly depressed at one point. Yep. Um, I mean, he admits wanting to die, mm-hmm. wanting to take his life. And he want, you know, he, he just wanted his life to end. He didn't want to be here anymore. And you see that in first Kings 19, three through five, but then you see, um, I mean, Paul, in all of his letters to the early church, I mean, he's he's counseling the church's mental health. I mean, he's yeah. telling, hey, cast, yeah. cast your anxieties on God. Hey, know that this pain, it's temporal. Like, mm. keep pushing, keep going. I mean, it, it's like every single message that we preach today mm-hmm. um, about continue to move forward, continue to push. I mean, that was Paul's letters from the beginning. And yep. so, yep. I mean, he mental health, it's like now it's we have words that associate to these things and these these feelings and these situations. Like we've put words and identity to them. Um, but they're not new things. It's not like we've yeah. invented this thing. This is something that people have been dealing with for a long time. And so I, I believe when you look at God's word through that lens, you start to see and pick apart, oh, mm-hmm. he's talking about this thing I'm dealing with right yep. now. He just didn't use the word depression. Yep. Or he didn't use the word anxiety. Yep. Um, some scriptures do. Yep. And then like when you read those, you're like, oh, okay, cast my anxieties on, on, onto the Lord. Yep. And you know, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's a reaffirming thing to see things through that lens and know this isn't new. So He's counseling them on things that I'm going through right now. Yeah, that's good. And I think we talked about it a little bit last week, but Jesus is going after the one, yeah, the the lost, the broken, the one that's away that feels like they're out of the 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 circle of 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 just that social circle, right? Yeah. Maybe you feel like I can't fit in with anybody. I I don't look the same. I don't talk the same. I don't think the same way. Which that causes that depression or that sadness, whatever it may be, um, and that anxiety, but he's going after you. Yeah. He cares about you so much. And I love how you said, like, Jesus died for you so that you could live out a great life mm-hmm. and a great story. So that's that's huge, man. Yeah, the Bible's filled with so many great truths, and, and we can run to that, and we can just fully worship by by reading God's word, by 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 even singing. I mean, I catch myself sometimes singing when I'm sad. That yeah. It just helps. Like like yeah. I think of Elf, the movie Elf. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm singing, and I'm in a store, and I'm singing, and it's like God, I'm depressed, and that's what David did. Like, yeah. He wrote this poetry down, and he talks about how like um, I, I feel like I'm in the dust, and I feel like I'm in the dirt, but God, I still praise you. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. And he's affirming himself in that. Like yeah. he's, he's telling himself that this is what I'm going to do. Yep. He's not He's mm-hmm. not like saying it like, uh, this is what I'm already doing and yep. I'm singing this song because it's finished and I'm done and I'm past. Like we don't want to share the testimony when we're in the test. Ooh. You know, like uh, that's what we got to do more of as as yep. Christians, I think. Yep. Like we got to share what, what am I going through right now? David did it and mm-hmm. he shows the example of it. Like he was going through that stuff yeah. in that moment and he's just sharing it with God. Yeah. And uh, I think that's, yeah, that's, again, I just keep coming back to this. Share it. Talk about it. Bring it to light. That's what David did. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's that's so good because David didn't know the end. He didn't know if the pain was going to go away, but he knew that God was good. He knew that God was still faithful at the end of the day. Um, And what a testament for us as we walk through this in our own lives. Another kind of scary question the church doesn't really like to necessarily touch on when it comes to mental health um, medication um, is it okay for me to take medication if I'm struggling with some of these things is it not what does Jesus think go yeah I mean my opinion probably similar to y'all's and maybe some people watching but yes like mm-hmm. of course it is okay to take medication yeah. I think like you can't rely on medication alone, mm-hmm. especially with mental health. Yeah. There's other, th- you can't just take a pill and it's like, okay, it's all going away. I don't need to talk about it. I don't need to see a counselor. No, you need to do all of those things yep. still. You need to see a counselor. You need to apply the principles, the coping skills, the things that they give you to do. You need to apply all those things together. And you need to talk about it. You need to pray about it. You need to share it with your, with your small group leader, with, a, with an accountability partner. You need to talk about 
your mental health if you haven't gotten that yet you need to talk about it yeah but yes of course medication is okay i think like when you go to the doctor and they prescribe something for your um stomach ache or right. your headache and you take yep. uh you know do you take medication for it now i think it's good to be wise with um you know what you're jumping into and when you're jumping into it and yeah. that's why it's good to have uh, the right people in your corner and you know to think through things but yep. i totally agree that it is okay to, mm -hmm. to take medication for these issues because god god may have orchestrated the whole discovery of that medication yep. like in mm -hmm. and given us this gift to be able to heal our our illnesses and our issues and and uh yeah i would just say yes i mean i th i think you should lean into that yeah just i would it, um the bible does say you know test everything yeah. and so like know what you're taking though yeah, don't exactly. like just like blindly take things i know that doctors are you know they've gone to medical school and everything but like just do your research too and mm -hmm. i like how you said you know have the people the people that are in your corner like fighting mm -hmm. for you as well um and so you know i've i've seen some cases where you know people have taken medicine and it's made them worse and yeah. so just making sure that you're really knowing what you're taking is is really important and i think the sacrifice in all of this is just you're gonna have to do some research yep. you know i think all of us are gonna have to do some research yep. we we need to study what is depression what is anxiety what are these things I'm going through or what are these things that my friend is going through? Mm -hmm. It's going to take some time, yep. you know, and it's, it's, it's not a turnkey like, okay, and we want the fast solution to everything. We do. And <laughs> especially with medication, we're like, cool, there's a pill now. I don't have to worry about anything anymore. And it's like, that's just yeah. not, it's mm -hmm. not the reality. Yeah. Like it's, 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 it's the medication plus so many other things yeah. or it's just those other things, you yep. know, but just yep. like you said, know what you're putting in your body, yep. like know what you're taking and do the research mm -hmm. and uh, bring some people alongside you to do the research with you. Because yeah. people want to care about you. They want to walk this with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. So, okay. So medication, yeah. take it, but do your research, know what you're putting in your body, that kind of yeah. thing. So I think medication is definitely a step that we can take once we realize, yes, I'm, I have anxiety. I actually have depression. I have these things, but there's, I think what you're kind of touching on is there's all of these steps that we can take to move towards the right direction. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what, what are some of those things? What do we need to do mentally, physically, emotionally to start taking that first step towards mm -hmm. healing in this area? Yeah. I was just saying like, there's so many steps. It yeah. can be a little overwhelming. I mean, I'm even getting overwhelmed like, oh man, I don't even, I, maybe if I did have some, if I do have an issue, I don't even want to talk about it. Cause then I got to do all these things, you yeah. know, it's like, oh, Wow. And so, you yeah. know, it's like, I don't want to create more reason for you to be silent about your mental health issues. So the biggest step, number one, and really the only one you need to worry about is bring it to light. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. We've said it a lot. I think it's probably a theme of our whole conversation. That's, that yeah. might be the um, answer to yeah. our big question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just bring it to light. Yeah. Um, I, you know, Shannon wrote an article that we're going to put in the comments or it's below in this, however you're going to get it, but you'll see that. But I wrote one on that same site um, about just kind of the men my mental health and my anxiety and um, my depression and kind of like what my experience with those words has been mm -hmm. and uh, my mental health. And I, I talk about the biggest issue, I think, in the church for pastors, but I th think it's a big issue just for humanity is we like to put things in the dark mm -hmm. that were not, you know, fully dealt with yet. Yeah. And so um, the truth is we don't eat things that grow in the dark. We eat things that grow in the light. Mm. And so, you know, when you're putting that issue in the dark, when you're not talking about it, when you're trying to ignore it, whatever that thing is, that secret, that thing you're shameful about, you're keeping it in the dark. It's not just sitting there and, and, and resting. Mm -hmm. It's actually growing mm -hmm. in the dark. And as it grows in the dark, anything that grows in the dark isn't healthy for you. Yep. But anything that grows in the light, it is mm -hmm. so put, test it put it into the light and if it's not healthy for you watch it watch it die watch it mm -hmm. not grow anymore yeah. and so you need to talk about it and you need to bring it into the light with safe people mm -hmm. and so i think your your student ministry is a safe place with your small yeah. group leaders and um you know your family your your friends but just know like the people you're watching right now we're we're a safe place for mm -hmm. you but bring it to light i've had a lot of experiences where i've had something in my head that i was ashamed of, scared of, uh, a feeling that I was experiencing. And I didn't want to share it with anyone, but the moment I chose to bring it to light, uh, Jesus was able to do, do his work mm -hmm. with, cause I gave it up and I brought it to someone and I said, Hey, this is what I'm dealing with. And we, and we, they carried the burden with me. And mm -hmm. I watched as I confessed that thing, um, whatever, you know, those things have been in the past as it just dissipated over mm -hmm. time because I brought it to light. But the more I just kind of thought about it, I didn't share it. It just kept growing in the dark into something I couldn't handle anymore yeah, yeah. So. so what i'm kind of hearing is like there's all these different ways that we can go about taking a first step towards healing uh but the biggest one bring it to the light if you guys yeah. haven't picked up on that yeah. already is bring yeah. it to the light 
Um, oh, man. Make it known. Make it known. Talk yeah. to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but what, what I'm kind of also picking up on is that it's not going to be easy. Like, yeah. the, the path to, like, healing, the path to redemption is not an easy one. Mm-hmm. And I think it's good for us to be transparent about that because we can't just, like, say, like, oh, you have mental health? Like, take a pill. It's going to yeah. be great. It's going to be so faith. simple. Have some faith. Yeah. Um, and so just kind of, like, really dismissing that kind of mentality. It is going to be difficult. Um, yeah. But anything, any kind of sin that mm-hmm. we are wrestling with in our life is going to be difficult. Yeah. That's right. Um, and But Jesus is the great physician. Mm-hmm. And he can, you know, walk with us in that and take care of that. Um, in the way that he seems best, fits best. So, oh, exactly. Man, really, really, really no, I think, that no, but you're story. so, no, you're <laughs> so right. Like it's, <laughs> it's something that's going to be hard. Um, but that doesn't mean it first off needs to be not looked at, mm-hmm. which I know that if you can agree, if you're a senior and you just finished your senior year, like senioritis is real, mm-hmm. right? Especially during COVID-19. Like I can't imagine Bro. being a senior during COVID-19, <laughs> but procrastination was a theme of my life. Yep. And then senior year, it became like a value of mine. <laughs> like I like I was I procrastinated like it was my job. Wow. And I think a lot of us are procrastinating on our mental health issues. Wow. We're not talking yeah. about them. We're putting them in the dark. We're like, hey, I just don't want to. I don't want to look at this. I don't want to talk about it. I'll deal with it later. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I got too much going on, or I don't. I just don't want to. That negativity doesn't need to be here. Mm-hmm. And I'll just deal with that in my my mm-hmm. private time. Yeah. But in order to actually deal with it, you got to do the work. You got to like when you got to write a paper, you still got to write a paper. It's still hard work. Yep. Uh, But, you know, when you're procrastinating, you're just putting off the work. I think for a lot of us, we got to we got to do the work Mm -hmm. of sharing, of going through the hard time. Like it's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy, but Mm -hmm. we got to do it. We got to bring it to light. This has been so much fun and uh, I'm I'm just enjoying my time with you guys and having these great conversations. I just wanted to give the floor for you if you wanted to say any last things, any last words, what you got? Yeah, I think just, I mean, for me, the biggest thing, like, let's talk about our issues. Let's talk about those things that we're keeping in the dark. Let's bring it to light. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's about it. Yeah, and we just want to let you know whether you are at UG. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) if you're at UG, if you're at Scottsdale Students, we're here for you as your leaders like we are here for you to talk yep, about yeah. these things you won't find any shame any guilt anything here um, we just want to walk through this stuff with you guys your small group leaders want to walk through this yep. with you so please um, take that first step of bringing these issues to the light um, and bring it to us bring it to your parents um, we want to love on you guys and walk through this with you yeah and like we always say you yeah. matter you matter you got it, Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. that's a wrap <laughs> <laughs>